it has been one of the busiest days I think ever. I have been here, there and everywhere. But, oh, please to note, prickly heat, gone now. No issues. I seem to be fine going back outside, but I'm very mindful not to get in the sun again. Gosh, I'm so tired. I'm absolutely exhausted. But I went to the range today. I don't know if you can see. Can you see out there that, um, what's this say? That up there is a jigsaw puzzle. I don't know if you can see. And that was on my dog Tosca and um, we got the photo put into a jigsaw so I could then put it into a frame, put it up. And, and we actually got one of the boys, Brady and Charlie, done too. Let me show you. So this is the photo that we got done of the boys. Um, can you see here, little Charlie the monkey, as I was making this picture, which took quite a while, uh yeah he got one of the pieces and started trying to eat it but part of me part of me was like do i need to get a whole new photo done or shall i just embrace it and be like do you know what that's just part of them and that's how they roll and that's little little monkeys for you isn't it so i thought I'll just leave it there and it can just be part of the history so i also went and got this frame from the range today and we've still got from this one some of that um it's like glue that you put onto photo uh, like jigsaws like this to hold them in place and it kind of I think it kind of seals it all to become like one one object maybe so I'm gonna try and do that put that together get it in the frame then hopefully get that up on the wall too, because that'll be really nice. Um, I'll see if I get it done this evening. Not sure that's going to happen, because I've just done so much today. And a little update on the house. So the house is now gone. It's, if you're at the time, after I filmed the little video during the tour around the house, it was, it was really sad. At the moment, I feel okay though. It's been a few days and... I think I'll be sad if I drive past it again, but I actually realised that I don't think I actually really lived at this house for that many years, but the house holds so many fun memories. Like when I think back to being a teenager, I used to have like the biggest parties there and it was just, there's just so many happy memories there, which I think it was why it was like so emotional saying goodbye um but it's part of life isn't it so these things happen and you have to close one chapter and move on to the next and i'm just pleased that i was well enough to get the time to kind of do a little tour at the end and have a look around and kind of go through some of those memories in each of the different rooms and say goodbye to my bedroom and you know all that kind of stuff um but yeah end of an era so who knows what's going to happen next. Also, if you're interested in getting one of these photos done, this one was from my photopuzzle.co.uk. 500 pieces. And that's, well, that is pretty much what it looks like. So, yeah, I'm really happy with those. I love these. I think jigsaw puzzles, I actually quite like anyway. Um, and it's just such a lovely keepsake, isn't it, that you can then put on the wall. I thought I'd come downstairs for this one, but I just wanted to show you. This is the stuff we use. It's called Puzzle Conserver. Um, and basically, I think it kind of just, there we go. What does that say? Ready to use adhesive for permanently conserving jigsaw puzzles. So, and it says allow one hour to dry. But last time the stuff worked really well. So I'm gonna give it a go this time. So I'm hoping this should be quite straightforward. So it says shape well. I'm mean, trying to do this one hand in one not be first. But I did give it a very good shape. Let's see what happens. Oh. oh. You see it's starting to come out now. I 
don't know if this is the right technique, but here we go. We're getting somewhere now. Okay, so I'm very nearly finished. It does smell a tiny bit, and I think possibly, can you see like some of these streaks? Just watch out for some of those. But you can blend it in quite well. So I think, I think that might be it. That looks pretty good. You can't see. Yeah, I think we're there. So I'm going to leave that for an hour and then I might give it another coat and see how it's looking. So I've just done a second coat and then I'm just going to leave it to dry for a couple of hours and hopefully that will pull it all together. And this is the finished frame. So we actually had to go and get a second frame for this because the first one that I got wasn't actually thick enough. So I would suggest if you're gonna do it, the one we ended up going with was one that's mounted, um, which just meant that it was deep enough to fit the, um, fit the jigsaw in in between it but now it's all done and we can put it up on the wall there we go both up on the wall now and i absolutely love them they're just such wonderful memories to keep and treasure so pretty oh gosh you can definitely see where charlie's been at his little bit but hey little monkeys aren't they but that's why we love them so how is everyone doing how are we feeling is that gonna hold there yeah how is life going at the moment it is so super hot right now and i i can't deny struggling a little bit with the heat but i have absolutely i'm just avoiding the sun at all costs and if i have to go out i keep myself covered up and i'm in the car with aircon and that's pretty much it because it is so warm the boys they're struggling a little bit at the moment too but we've got them cool mats so we got them i think it's from pets at home and they absolutely love those. We've managed to get it to the point where they'll spend some time out in the sun and then they'll come back and choose to go and lie on the cool mats themselves. And we did that by just using treats. So we'd come and put the boys on the cool mat, give them some treats, help them kind of learn what it was. Because it's one of those ones that, that you don't need to cool down, but the pressure of being on it, that just makes it cool in itself, which is amazing. So I wanted to ask, how, how are you guys managing going out at the moment have you been seeing lots of people or not or because I've I've kind of I think I'm still being quite reserved if I'm honest I have started stepping out into a couple of little social scenarios but I'm still I'm not there yet I'm totally taking my time with it and I'm just gonna do what feels right for me so I did actually go to oh you might be able to hear the lawnmowers out that I think that's the most popular noise that I'm hearing right now constantly is people's lawn. I'm sure they did it the other day though. Anyway, sorry if you can hear that. I'm gonna keep going. So I went to a barbecue the other day and I was really proud of myself. So when I got there, I didn't actually feel that anxious about going, which was really nice. And there was only a few of us. Um, yeah, so I didn't feel nervous, but, and this is what I wanted to talk about, um, is, I became aware at how detached I was. So my kind of derealization seemed to be heightened or kicking in a bit more than usual, or I was more aware of it. And then what I realized was the more I focused on it, the worse it was getting like in the moment. And then I started panicking a little bit in my head, you know, I didn't share it with anyone. And I just started to think, oh my gosh, why is it getting worse? Why is it getting worse? And in those moments it was like the people around me were becoming less familiar less real like it was really kicking in strong and i think at the moment i'm kind of on the i'm, I'm in an okay place but i'm kind of on the edge of a bit that some things i think could quite easily trigger me well kind of i guess push me into a worse place or a better place like i'm quite i don't know what the word is like in amongst everything right now so what i said to myself 
at that moment was let's focus on other things so i then really tried to pay attention to the conversation the food we we're eating what was going on around me and to stop getting in my head because i think i'd really forgotten how how much focusing on the dp and dr makes it worse now when i was back in the early days of when i got this that was all i did you know i didn't know what was going on i i was so detached i couldn't focus on anything else and definitely that focus of am i real are they real what's going on does the world feel you know the the constant analyzing really does fuel to keep you detached um i then got to a phase where i could distract myself and i wasn't constantly consumed with you know observing and paying attention to everything in detail and that that seemed to really help and the less that i have to pay attention or the less that i do pay attention to being detached the better my symptoms seem to become as well i had another moment the other day as well when i was playing with the boys and then i just became very aware of my hands and I was like, do they look more real or do they not look more real? And it was, it was so bizarre to explain because I was like, I either feel really connected or I feel really detached. And I wasn't sure which one it was. And it, it, I did feel a bit anxious about it. But then the best thing that I did was to distract myself and just not pay attention to it. And then I kind of just got back into the swing of life. I remember in the early days when it would kind of come and go so at the moment i've had it like permanently for many many years now but in the beginning days it would come for maybe a, a day a few days a couple of weeks and then it would go again and the way that it went was by not paying attention to it and i'd then get to the point where i was like oh i would just feel like everything feels real again and didn't even realize and that's been one of the things that i've kind of taken on a bigger scale is the more the more I can not pay attention to it um, and just kind of get on with life, the more it helps me. Now, I know I do talk about it a lot in these videos and things like this, but actually that doesn't, for me, that helps my understanding and it doesn't actually make me worse. Is when I'm in that moment looking at whatever it might be, my hands, reflection in a mirror, other people and being like the questioning, am I, am I connected? Am I getting more detached? What's going on? And the real intense observation of that that's what seems to spiral it for me so the more i've kind of dealt with things in life you know i spent many years in counseling as well which has really helped me kind of understand my thought patterns and behaviors and how to improve those and make those healthier the more it's helped me get to a point where i don't have to pay attention to how connected i am 24 7 and i can actually enjoy some more things in life so back in those early days it it was such a struggle to not pay attention to it. I couldn't. It was as much as, you know, I was hearing, just accept that this is the way this is. It was so, so difficult. But I did work to get to a point where I could do that. And as much as now, I still really wish that I was more connected than I am. I still believe I'm on a journey to keep, you know, progressing through that. And that's that gives me hope. And that that also stops me you know being in that questioning mindset of but how bad are things and and that can really for me that can really escalate my anxiety and then i become anxious about being anxious and i start thinking but i'm so anxious that's going to make my symptoms worse and it kind of spirals into a mess and i need to break that so that i can get back to kind of living life and being a little bit more present but present in the way of what's going on around me and not necessarily how connected i am to that i don't know if that makes much sense i'm hoping it does but for me it's really helped to to focus on things and what's going on around me rather than how detached i might feel from them that's the bit that i think does not or certainly has not helped me because even the other day i think if i'd have kept focusing on that detachment it just would have spiraled and then I could have got to a place that I really didn't want to be in. Oh, one more thing whilst I think about it, because I fell into this trap recently as well, is the whole Googling scenario. Um, sometimes I do get into a place where 
I start then focusing and researching and being like, what does this mean? What's this mean? What's going on with me? Where am I at? What can I help? Blah, blah, blah. And it can consume me a lot. That doesn't, I mean, occasionally I found something helpful in it, but ultimately I then have to step away from that because I think, you know, consuming yourself with that constantly is not going to help. It's just going to keep fueling you know, the negativity and the anxious thoughts, which just don't help us. So I think maybe do it for a little bit if you have to, and then step away, get back into trying to live your life and focus on what is going on in your life, rather than that intense analysis. That has helped me so much. I need to be aware of my own traps that I could easily fall back into. Um, and I don't wanna go, go that way. You know, I think we've had enough of the really difficult years Let's keep moving forward in positive ways and, you know, get back the lives that we deserve because I absolutely believe that we can. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time. Bye!